Hello everybody, my name is Kevin Holland and I'm part of the healthcare solutions team here at VMware. I just want to take a few minutes to talk to you about the uh, benefits of extending your data center out into our hybrid cloud. As always, we want to uh, kind of frame this conversation around some of the challenges that our healthcare customers are facing today in the industry. Customers are spending a lot of time um, making sure that their environments are compliant. They're also um, having more revenue pressures than ever before. And also challenged to deliver better quality of service than ever before. On top of all of this, as they try to um, meet the demands of their organization, they're challenged to reduce risk. So I just want you guys to be thinking of that as we kind of go through our conversation today. So let's take a step back. What does, uh, what does a data center look like today? Well, a data center really is just a set of resources. It's a set of compute, storage, it is access to a network, um, it is the software that sits on top of all of this hardware, right? And really, if you're virtualized today, you don't necessarily care about the underlying hardware. You just care that you have access to resources. So that when an application team needs to deploy the next uh, version of Epic, they can get the, the resources that they need, right? So when, uh, let's say, uh, you're implementing an electronic medical record at your health system, um, you realize that now, uh, more than ever before, your clinicians need to have access to that EMR 24 by 7 because it's required for patient care. Um, the challenge is that those EMR applications are very, very complicated, right? And they have lots of moving parts. So what we try to do is we try to create a lot of redundancy in this environment to make sure that it's not going to go down. But what happens if there is an outage? What happens if there is a, a lack of power? There's an HVAC issue and it overheats, um, the data center overheats. What happens if there's a flood or a fire? Well. Healthcare systems try to combat this and reduce risk, right, by investing in another site, in another data center. That data center could be a colo that they go and rent space and they still have to, but they still have to purchase hardware uh, and software in order to run it. Uh, it could be on site where they may not have, to, they already have a building, but they still need to invest, right? So they have to invest capital in order to make that investment and then be able to um, replicate storage and re make sure that applications are available on both sides, again, to reduce the risk that their clinicians are not going to have access to the EMR. But then, again, it comes down to this, to this money. Is there a way that we can make sure that we can remain compliant and that we can deliver higher quality of service but not invest that money? What if we were able, what if we were able to take the same connections that we would take to our regular data center, whether they be a point-to-point -point VPN or a dedicated link, and we were able to make those connections to the cloud? You'll find that the cloud really, if we take a step back, is just another set of resources. It's just another, another uh, pool of resources that we can place an application on. So there's a couple compelling use cases that we feel are really relevant to healthcare today. First, we're gonna talk about recovery as a service. We talked a little bit about before about providing disaster recovery services, and that's why these big capital outlays are happen, um, so that they can ensure that that EMR application or whatever whatever clinical application a health system has and provides uh, can be up in the event of a disaster. With recovery of a, uh, as a service, using uh, the same tools you know and love, you're able to actually take the data that lives in your primary data center and copy it onto our hybrid cloud. There's some key advantages to doing this. First off, um, it's replication only.
Meaning, we don't charge you for all the compute associated for uh, this recovery as a service, um, managed service. Uh, we'll allow you to replicate the data through the vSphere hypervisor using vSphere replication. And in the event of a disaster, you can just go in and start those systems back up. You'll have access to compute twice a year when you're doing a test, or if you have an actual failover, we'll give you a full 30 days to use the compute resources in the cloud. Um, and if you need them longer than that, we can certainly move you over into another model. So again, two tests a year. One month um, compute for an actual VR. And also, you're getting access to resources that are much more efficient than going to uh, a colo or disaster recovery service provider, um, and much less than what you're having to do to provide a data center yourself. Uh, the second use case that we feel is very, very important is allowing you to take legacy applications that you're that your EMR has replaced and put them out into the cloud. The question I have is, if you have uh, applications that an Epic or a MetaTag have replaced, why would you want to have them running necessarily in this expensive um, architecture where you have lots of eyes and lots of dedicated resources to, uh, to uh, ensure that they're online? We already know that there's lots of revenue pressure. so. What I suggest is the best way to handle this is to actually move those applications out into the cloud so that they are still available for your clinic, uh, clinical uh, personnel to access on a historical, um, or for historical lab studies or what have you, and then save these expensive resources for what's in production today. Right? Um, another really interesting, I'm actually gonna put this one here, so legacy workloads. An interesting byproduct of this type of methodology is it gives you re, uh, financial transparency for those workloads. So if you know that uh, an application that is no longer needed in a production capacity is moved out to the cloud, now you can show back to your business and say, okay, this application is gonna cost so much money per month. And now instead of IT having to be the people that are responsible for the care and feeding of the infrastructure that is required for the application to run, now you can pass uh, some of those uh, costs back to the application team and back to the business so that they can be responsible for um, providing the resources available to run that application. Right? One, another interesting, um, another interesting, uh, use case is for bursting, right? So once you have this, uh, this connection set up with our hybrid cloud, you now have the access to, to go and install applications out to the cloud using the same tools you use today, whether you're installing uh, or deploying a VM from the vSphere client, um, or if you're using vCloud Automation Center. Those same templates can be installed on-prem or off-prem. Now, again, we talked about revenue pressures. And many organizations are not investing as heavily uh, or as quickly in their environment. They try to run this very lean. However, there are times that the business needs access to those resources very, very quickly. And they don't, and instead of making them wait for one or two weeks, one or two months, depending on your acquisition process, we can simply install applications out here, allow the application teams and application owners to install software and validate then, once infrastructure is available on premises, you can simply turn off that application, migrate it back, and then have this uh, this burstable pool ready for the next application. So there's a uh, sort of put right here burst capacity, and this is really a time to market issue. Right? Again, giving the business the ability to make decisions: Do I need it now? Um, and, or can I wait until we have on-premises uh, resources uh, and then I'll deploy it later, right? Um, so, 
as I said, there are many different use cases with many different benefits. All going back to revenue pressures, quality of service, and reducing overall risk. The compliance, again, in terms of disaster recovery, we all know that there's HIPAA compliance concerns around disaster recovery, and we want to make sure that in the event of a disaster, we can very quickly and easily recover our applications. So those are our three healthcare-specific use cases on how you can better use the hybrid cloud and easily extend your data center out into our cloud.